I just like to say it's my first time on TV. Typical textbook carpet conditions and I'm buzzing. <laughs> yeah, proper buzzing. Oh God, we've got another one. This is going a bit mental over here, isn't it? Oy. Winding backwards as fast as I could. <laughs> buzzing. Oh my God, I think it is. It's got the lump. It's got the lump. It's got the size. The brownies in town. Look at that. <laughs> Speechless. And uh, there we go. <laughs> Right, uh, where were we last? Oh yeah, long reach. So last week, um, just after I last done a bit of filming, the fish started spawning at the other end. So packed up, called it a day, and uh, we decided we'd give them a good couple of weeks off to rest. And uh, I gave them a good bit of grub before I left. And then I come back this week and thought, oh, I'll have a little holiday on the meadow. Um, it's been doing the odd fish lately. And I thought whilst I'm up here, I can go and keep trickling bait into long reach you know i um, never really used bait as my advantage on on there so i thought whilst it's shut you know i can kind of give a few little spots a good bit of bait and hopefully that'll give me an advantage um, when we go back on there anyway so i got down the meadow yesterday um had a good look about considered going in the long reach bit because there had been some fish showing over there but there'd also been fish showing out in the middle um, my mate Steve's over on the tea bar and he'd been seeing quite a few out in front of him. Um, so I thought, right, well, this swim round on the road banks done me proud before. So uh, I'll come in here. So I came in here, uh, put four rods out, sort of between 80 and 100 yards, scattered them around and then put a couple of kilos of bait out with a throwing stick. And I had seen a couple in here sort of uh, in the afternoon, sort of one at a range and one only about 60 yards out. So I knew there was fish in the vicinity. Um, didn't go to bed till about one o'clock. It was one of them nights where I had a buzz on, you know. <laughs> and then I set my alarm for half four, got up at half four, sitting there watching the water. See a bird come across and it dived down where, roughly where one of my rods was. And I had a bleep on that, but then within seconds I had a bleep on the other one and the bird was sort of about 20 foot away from that. So I thought, oh, that must have been a liner. And I was just on my second cup of tea of the day. And one of them's gone. So I grabbed that, playing that in, and literally I'd only been playing it in about, I don't know, well, a minute or so, I reckon. And uh, I put my GoPro on my head. And the other rod's absolutely ripped off. I'll say the other rod, one of the other rods is absolutely ripped off. And I'm playing this other one in and there's got a little one on, on the rest going, zzz, 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 zzz. rod's it bending around, this braid on there, so it's proper savage, isn't it? I'm trying to loosen it off, but then that's too loose, trying to tighten up, and then that's too tight. And I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing. Oh my God, what a hairy old uh, 10 minutes. <sighs> so, got my first ever Meadows Common. Never caught a common out of here before. And uh, got a mirror as well. I'm not sure exactly how big they are yet. I haven't had a proper look. It's been uh, <laughs> absolutely buzzing. I like, don't, don't know what's hit me. <laughs> so yeah, proper result. Anyway, right, they're in the net. So I'm going to leave them there for a minute. Let them have a little rest. Get two new rigs knocked up and uh, get them back out there. Because obviously it's a little window of opportunity here that I've got to take advantage of. Um, yeah, let's do it. First one, 32 and a half pound common. Mega cup. Oh, light's not the best round here, is it? As you can see, stunning creature. Awesome condition. The old commons are pretty rare in here. So uh, yeah, it's nice to get to meet one. 
Happy blooming days. I reckon the other one might even be a 32. The old Chinese dentist. In a double take. 230. Yeehaw. Yeah, boy. Mega chuffed. Result. One last little look. Rude not to, really, isn't it? Especially if she's being so well behaved. <laughs> awesome. Go on, the old dorsal. What a cold creature. Chuffed. Right. There you go, Gil. Wow, look at this for a mega Meadows mirror. 34 pound, just over. Lovely clean one. This fish in here is so cool. Got a mega sheen on them. That's uh, because they hardly ever get caught, you know? And there's still loads in here that haven't actually been caught. And it's doing some real big ones. God knows how many 40s are in here now. So, gonna be a crazy place in the future. Well, it's already a crazy place now. Gordy had the uh, foresight to stock this place quite a long time ago. And uh, yeah, thanks mate, because you've done a mega job. Box of chocolates, love it. <laughs> well, as I was playing this one in, there was a muscle hanging off the line, a massive great swan muscle, and I'm just thinking, oh no. <laughs> what if that just slices through? But. Luckily it didn't. <laughs> awesome. Still buzzing, not even had any coffee this morning. And only on, what, three and a half hours sleep. Um, yeah, proper result that. It's 100 odd acres this lake and these fish don't give themselves up easily, you know. There's a hell of a lot of nights that go in, uh, rod hours if you like, for, uh, for each fish. Obviously at this time of year, it seems like there's, you know, there's a few more coming out than usual. It's that old duffer's fortnight, isn't it? Sort of two weeks before they start spawning, tend to have a little munch up and become a little bit more catchable. Um, so yeah, chuffed. So I actually started off last night with two solid bags and two on spinners, but by about 11 o'clock I'd had a couple of little pulls on the solid bags. I sort of tipped a small look bait off of a few maggots. So uh, yeah, obviously I knew that they'd been yanked about by eels, so decided that wasn't the one, whipped them in put spinners on them, um, the old faithful IBs, and put about two kilos of bait out with a frying stick. I actually had to wait literally till half 10, 11 o'clock before I could even do that. The seagulls were relentless. Even in darkness, they're still managing to get them. Right? There's swarms of them. Every time you think they're gone, you know, you pick up the old stick, put a couple out and bang, there's 20, 30 seagulls appear from nowhere. So um, yeah, had to wait really late for that. Smothered the bait in loads of smart liquid as well. And you know, I think when you put it on it, just before putting them out, or you know, like it was on for a couple of hours marinating, if you like, I think um, a fair bit of it kind of washes off as it goes through the water. And I think that gets into the water column and then drifts off with the undertow and can really help sort of draw the fish in. Certainly doesn't hurt, that's for sure. Um, but I think, you know, what I normally do is soak them up beforehand, get them out of the freezer, give them a good old uh, coating, and then kind of let that dry a little bit. And then I'll add more before I put them out. Um, and then obviously the stuff that's dried a little bit gets all the way to the bottom and releases everything uh, from there. One little thing, this little tip I've wanted to talk about for quite a while now, because, uh, 
so something that's going to save you money. If you use spinner rigs and you use these little hook beads and kickers, um, they add up, you know, and if you're using quite a few of them, it gets quite expensive. So what I do to reuse them is get my old rig, get a little pair of pliers, magpie behind me, hopefully there's more than one, and then just crimp down the barb and then you can just slide off that hook bead and then slide off the kicker and reuse them. So the hook beads, obviously they get a little bit looser. So if you want to reuse them, which I still do, I put two of them on instead of one. Um, and yeah, that's enough to grip it. Because obviously it's a little bit loose and you whack it out hard. You don't want that um, swivel slip around onto the hook onto the bend of the hook if you like. So yeah, two of them, the old recycled ones, will keep it in place and a recycled kicker is good, good for a few fish normally before they start getting a little bit worn. So yeah, save yourself some money, recycle your bits and bobs. Well, I don't know why, but I've turned into a insomniac. On, you know, insomniac, easy for you to say. Uh, the last couple of nights, just couldn't nod off last night. Um, it was quite warm, a few mozzies. I should have put my mozzie mess on, um, but yeah, I literally don't think I've had more than about 20 minutes sleep all night. But the good news is, I've got another cup. Um, about, I don't know, what, about an hour before it got light. Not even that, actually, 40 minutes before it got light, because I had an incredible sunrise this morning. Well, actually, it was before the sunrise. It was probably 45 minutes before the sun came up, but the colours in the sky were just out of this world. Amazing, beautiful light and colour. Um, so, yeah, that was a real treat to well, not wake up to, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, anyway, yeah, like I said, like, R3, um, left hand rod was absolutely ripped off. Like, I picked up the rod, and because I'm using braid, I'm so used to just tightening up the clutch and flicking on the anti reverse. Um, well, I've got to get out of that habit. <laughs> I was just back I didn't even have a chance to, un, uh, you know, to loosen off the, the anti, uh, sorry, the, the clutch because it was just tearing off and I was just like winding backwards as fast as I could <laughs> for about 60 or 70 yards I reckon it was like well last time I had something like that it was I was marlin fishing in Thailand <laughs> it was extreme um, and now yeah, I've got a lovely long mid 30 mirror so yeah give it another 15 minutes or so that light get a bit better and we'll get him out and have a look at him. I say him because he is a him. Um, I might have even caught it before actually. It looked a little bit familiar. But it was dark so I uh, didn't have a proper look. But yeah, buzzing. <laughs> and obviously, you know, we're just at kind of peak bite time now. Or well, yesterday's peak bite time. But this lake in general, any time in the next sort of couple of hours, three hours. There's a chance of a bite, you know. Um, even if you're not seeing them, it seems. But yesterday morning, I hadn't actually seen any fish show in my zone, so to get them bites out of the blue like that just proves to you that sometimes you do have to sit on your hands and uh, sit through bite time, regardless of whether you've seen them. A lesson for me, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, right, mental.
Come on the brown. Go the brown, texture legs. Let's be having a Look at that for a mega carp. Lovely long one. Definitely a male in. Just starting to get the old spawning tubercles. The scrap was absolutely ridiculous. Literally just tore off about 70 yards of line. Because I'm not used to the old uh, braid, you know. I'm just not used to fishing with a clutch, playing with a clutch. So, yeah, I have to get used to that for sure because he caught me out. What a cool creature, buzzing, oh, lovely. Just got to get, keep your hand in front of their face. <laughs> Apparently it's the same with otters, when otters realise that once they've got their, you know, they get in front of their face, that's when they start killing them. That's when they become much better hunters rather than just grabbing their tails. Well, he's more than ready to go home. What a carp. Lovely. Go on in, mate. Yeah. Well, it's been a quiet old day over here today as far as shows are concerned. I've literally seen three, I think. Um, one of them wasn't a million miles away. But yeah, the wind's been banging over the other side today. Uh, it has been quite chilly and quite strong. I'm pretty sure that you know, at this time of year they, they want to spawn and they want to be warm. So I can imagine them not sort of not hanging about on the end of that wind if they were to get on it at all. So I'm still feeling pretty confident on the back of it here. I must admit, I know it sounds a bit stupid, but getting a bit bored of this view already. <laughs> um, 48 hours in a swim and I start to get a bit like, I don't know, I fancy a change. I'm, I'm one of them people, you know, variety is the spice of life. And, and also once my rods are out, I always think, oh, there's a chance. I don't actually want to leave my swim. I'm not really one of these people who just winds in and goes for a walk each day. Um, Maybe I should get myself a little carp dog, so I have to. So yeah, um, obviously I'm not going anywhere. I am going to be sitting it out, certainly tonight. Um, I've been putting sort of six baits out at a time every half hour or so. That's all I can get out before the seagulls appear. And I'll probably give it another sort of kilo or so tonight, but I'll tell you what, I know this sounds a bit pathetic. My arm is killing me. First session of the year using a throwing stick and it's all kind of like maximum throwing stick range. And my poor little arms just ain't used to it. <laughs> that and lifting 30 pounders up each morning. Not that I'm complaining. Um, just got to get my old arm in training and I. <laughs> so anyway, yep, yeah, like I said, it's going to be sitting tight. There's plenty of big ones out in here that are well due out and uh, especially the brown because just talking to someone actually, and I don't think it officially came out last year from what I know of, unless anyone else knows different. Feel free to drop me a message or put something in the comments below. Um, but yeah, it got hooked, foul hooked, should I say, by a pike angler in September, and it was just under 48 pound. Aside from that, I don't think it came out last year, and it's normally one of the more friendly fish in the lake. So it's definitely well due. It likes its bait. So best I'll get some more out there. And uh, hopefully it's going to be one of the next ones along. But like I say, you just never know with this lake. I reckon there could easily be a couple of real major surprises in it. You know, potentially upper 40s, scraper 50s, 
that might not have even been caught before. You know, they were stocked quite a long time ago and looking at how the others are growing, you know, there's always one or two that shoots ahead of the others. So, rich old place, every chance of it. Come on, the uncaught monster. Well, this morning I woke up and uh, it was flat calm, really sunny. I was lacking in sleep massively. So uh, I turned my alarm off and went back to bed. And got up, wasn't feeling it around there. Three nights in one swim, that was enough for me. I needed to get out of there and uh, yeah, needed a, a new vista. I wasn't ready to go home, the weather's far too good for that. Um, so I had a good look about, baited up the spots on long reach that I wanted to get baited up, ready for next week. and come on to the meadow and I was chatting to a guy uh, called John. I stood in his swim for a little while, um, first time I've met him. And then I caught one out of the corner of my eye to, to see one out to the left. I thought, well, that's definitely a carp, <laughs> buzzes on. So uh, yeah, I've, I've went and stood on the far end bank where I could see all of this area. And I saw probably about five or six within about 20 minutes, not even that, 15 minutes. So I was like, right, that's it. They weren't in a particular area, they were sort of spread about this zone. So uh, yeah, I've got around here as quickly as possible. Um, wanged out four single IBs for now, and I'll put out some bait with a stick later on, but the wind's banging in here. It's like typical textbook carpy conditions, and I'm buzzing. <laughs> yeah, proper buzzing. <laughs> oh shit, I better get my net set up. <laughs> Well, I don't like swearing on carp angle because, you know, the youngsters might be watching it and all of that, but me. <laughs> These rods have been out there about 20 minutes and one of them's just dropped back to the floor, cranked into it. <sighs> mega, mega, big pit scrap. Got kited down the left, tried getting these reeds. I got my GoPro on, so I got a bit of the footage and uh, whew, it's hairy old stuff playing them on that braid, isn't it? I think I'm starting to get a bit used to it now, but anyway, forget all that. We've got a chunk. We've got a proper chunk. Oh man, it might even be a 40 pounder. <laughs> right, I need to get that rod back out ASAP. And then, uh, yeah, I'll, go, I'll put him in a sling for now, actually. I wouldn't want him getting out. And then, yeah, get the rod back out and we'll have a look at him. <laughs> Buzzing. Oh, 
Oh, she's a big girl. <laughs> she's definitely a big girl. Could be a big 4 -0. Let's find out. Oh, God, big blimey. God, holy sh. Forty-four pound, ten ounces. Shit. God, it's massive. <laughs> oh, kid in the sweet shop. Well, I knew she was big. I didn't think she was that big. Oh, biggest one I've had for quite a while. <laughs> Look at that. So I've got to move back to get it all in shot. Forty-four pound, ten ounces of prime Meadows mirror. <laughs> Look at the condition of that. That is absolutely insane. Buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. Wow. You can have a kiss, mate. Look at the scales on the back there. Lovely little row. Massive width. Lovely purpley hue. <laughs> Javi is happy. Ooh, proper old waves coming in here. Mega bit of carpy weather. And how's about that for a mega, mega carp? Yes. <laughs> oh, reeds upstaging you. Look at that. Awesome. Lovely times. All right then, girl. Got a mega mouth, haven't you? Ain't been caught much. I think I might have seen a picture of it before though. That single scale in the middle there, ringing a bell. We've got another one. This is going a bit mental over here, isn't it? Oy. I stripped off about 40 yards, 50 yards to start with. <sighs> right, I need to get my waders on, don't I? It's waders o'clock. She's going. Oh. Why doesn't someone make some waders easier to get into? Feels heavy. Very heavy and powerful. It's going off. 
One man went to mow, went to mow a meadow. One man and his rod went to mow a meadow. Oh, mate, this is fucking, excuse my French, very powerful, very heavy. And the brown is well due out. And apparently that life's a ruck as well. I'm on these other lines. Oh, almost feels like it's caught on something, but... Oh. I think it's just heavy. I don't know, maybe has found something. Feels a bit odd. I want to pull too hard. Oh, it's off again. Oh, definitely something. I don't know whether it's just weed or what. There's not really any weed left in here. Well, not left, not any weed growing up this year because of the blue dye. Oh, God, it's pulling hard. Come on, girl. Why is that not feeling quite right? Are you just super heavy? Or are you stuck on something? I don't think it's stuck, because it is moving. It's pulling offline. I think she's just a whale. We got a hippo. Here she comes. Come on, girl. Golden brown texture like sun. Never a frown with golden brown. Mate, does it get much more carpy than this? Jesus Christ. It's off the carpometer. CAF, bro. CAF. Right, where are you? Mate, this is so heavy. So heavy. Is it going to be the brown? Oh my god, I think it is. It's got the lump. It's got the lump. It's got the size. It's in the net. Is it in the net? It's in the net. It's in the net. It's in the f***ing net. Golden brown texture like sun. <laughs> We've got it, we've got it, <laughs> we've got the brown. No way, no way. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> don't believe it, I don't believe it. <laughs> the brown is in town, <laughs> it's in my net. Wow, it's definitely heavy. It's very, heavy. very, very heavy. She is a big old girl. Special old carp, this one. Been around for many years, isn't it, Martin? Woo, look at that belly. That big round tail, look at that. 
Is that why it's called the round brown? <laughs> it's got a big round tail, brown tail. Looks... God. Well, you just fits in. well, last out September, foul hooked by a pike angler. And it was big. And now it's definitely big. Who's going to read it? You are. Go on, yeah. John might be able to get in behind and see it as well. Oh, go on, I got it. This is zeroed, is it? Yeah. It is 50 pounds. Hey. 50 pounds, 8 ounces. Yes! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 50 pounder. <laughs> wow. Cheers, oh, mate. Well done. Cheers, mate. Wow, I've still got this on my finger. <laughs> wow. Look at that. She is huge. Ancient, lovely old carp. Wow. One I dearly wanted to catch, and I was going to come and have a proper go for it at some point, but got lucky whilst having a break on long reach whilst they spawn. Unbelievable. Right. Because she's so big, we're going to get her straight in the water and do some water shots because uh, she's got a big old belly on her. She's probably full of eggs. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd feel safer with her in the lake than I would on the bank. Yep. Yep. Speechless. This is the first time this has gone 50 pounds. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Jesus, Joseph and Mary. Now that is what you call a big car. Special one, that. Shout out to me, mate, Scott from Ireland. Can't pronounce his surname. Locha, 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 locha. Uh, the other night I granted him a wish and his wish was for me to catch this and uh, there we go. <laughs> Cheers Scott. <laughs> Legend. Oh, wow. Wow. Look at him. Uh, sorry. Sorry girl. Unbelievable. Simply unbelievable. <sighs> right, I need a rest. I'm sure she does too. There you go girl. Get yourself a little drop of water and we'll have another go in a second. <laughs> right, go in a sec. <clears throat> oh, my wrist, mate. <laughs> Just drop it down yeah. Losing strength in that wrist. To do a terry on. There you go. Right, I'm going to say farewell to this amazing old carp. Thank you very much. Mwah. Can have one of them. Not many carp get them, so I feel special. <laughs> Cheers. Nice one. There she goes. Go on, girl. You got this. Oh, that was me pushing her up then. <laughs> Come on. Let's have a strong one. Go on, you can't go now. Promise ya. Here she goes. Not that way. That way. <laughs> yes. Go on, girl. Yes. 
Sun is shining, weather is sweet, yeah. <laughs> well, as you can imagine, it was a, a massive struggle getting to sleep last night. Um, yeah, the insomnia continued, but for good reasons. I did manage to get sleep out too, to be fair. And uh, yeah, there was no setting alarm, <laughs> an alarm this morning. So I need a little laying, aching and tired and yeah, the buzz, like, after getting such an intense buzz, you know, it kind of yeah, it definitely uh, takes it out of you a little bit, for sure. Um, pretty speechless, to be honest with you. Um, like, you know, I was always going to come and have a go for that one on here. Obviously, I did have a dabble before, and every time I'd look one, I'd be like, oh, is it a brown, is it a brown? <laughs> um, yeah, oh, to catch that and the 44 within two hours of each other. It's just insane. What I love about it as well is everyone's always like, oh, you know, the, the brown, oh, it's a lot of bait. It always comes out to a lot of bait, you know, 10 kilos, um, snowman rigs and all of that. And, you know, and I, I fall into that trap sometimes myself. I'm like, well, you know, I'll put a bit of bait out and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fishing for the brown. <laughs> but I think, you know, deep down, I just have to kind of stick to my strengths and, for me, it's not just even the strength, it's, it's more enjoyable for me um, to be just getting about, you know, fishing for like, sort of opportunist style, if you like. Um, and it works, you know, you get a single hook bait in the right place at the right time and you, know, you, can, you can catch any carp, I truly believe that. And I think sometimes they, they'll come easier because of that, you know, because there's nothing else there for them to compare it to or to distract them from it. You know, as soon as they see that hook bait, then all their focus and attention is on that. And obviously they go down, check it out, bang, nail. And if you've got a super sharp hook and a, a good rig that works well, um, I, I, you know, I love that spinner rig. I know on pressured lakes, you know, they might be getting a bit used to them or whatever, but you can't beat the, uh, the efficiency of, of the way that rig fishes. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. And the IBs, obviously I've got so many carp on them now. Like the first night, I think I've put out three different hook baits, two on IBs and two on other baits. And uh, yeah, it was the IBs that went. So it's like, why am I even messing about? Just stick all four on these. So I to think, well, oh, maybe the brown might, you know, maybe it wants to, a food bait, a fish meal bait, maybe it doesn't like a fruity pop up and you know I think you've just got to get that out of your head isn't it? you've just got to go in with what you're most confident with and know that you know it's just got to be in the right place at the right time and obviously a little bit of lady luck on your side too <laughs> of course always thank you universe mucho gracias so um, I'm going to give it the next couple of hours because we are in a little sort of peak time at the moment I haven't, hadn't seen anything here out here this morning, but obviously I wasn't up until late. Um, and then about nine o'clock, um, a guy called Tetley, Andy, he came along and standing here chatting and having a look at the time. And I saw a few kind of like a long way out, um, like over the other side really, pretty much where they were when I got here the other day. So had written it off but I thought well, I'll give it till 12 anyway and then about 10 minutes ago I was just uh, recording a little voice message for Adam and uh, I see one about 90 yards out I couldn't be sure whether it was a bream a tent or a cart but it was a show um, so yeah I'm going to give it another couple of hours but rude not to wouldn't it and then <laughs> you can tell I'm buzzing guy I still uh, yeah then I'm going to pop over to Longreach and top up the spots on there I'm kind of changing my game a little bit to how I normally fish um, with regards to trying to you know, fish for that friendly um, I won't go into details because A it might not work and B you know it, it might work and it might take a little while before I get the result I'm after if you know what I mean so anyway I'm not doing anything 
like radically different or cheating or anything like that. Um, yeah, just trying to think outside the box a little bit compared to how I've been fishing and how I see other people fishing on there. So, uh, yeah, buzzing for that. So, what's it? It's Friday today, going home today. I'm uh, going to go home for the weekend. I'm probably going to come back either Sunday or Monday. Um, get back on there, like they say, when you're on a roll, keep rolling and yeah, let's give it a go, eh? Come on, the old friendly common. <laughs> Red letter sessions. Um, well, I don't really fish waters where you get, I haven't fished many waters where you get lots and lots of fish. So it wouldn't be along those lines. I suppose thinking about it, you know, the first thing that springs to mind is just over the road on Horton when I fished in the salt circle. I got there and there was a massive wind blowing up the other end. All the anglers were fishing on the wind. It was my third and final year on there. I think it was September time. Uh, and I, so I set up <clears throat> on the back of the wind where the fish had been the week before and I caught three fish that session. I had a 20 pound common, I had the parrot over 40 pounds I believe, 42 pounds and I had shoulders over 40 pounds. Now shoulders was my obsession on there and I'd caught all the other big name fish in the lake um, and to finally get him, I had the big boat battle in the weed, I, you know the whole lot, I had mates there Everything I remember about that session was just blinding, you know, not only to get a brace of 40s, um, but to, to finally catch shoulders, to see him like, laying on my onlooking mat there. Friends came up, bottle of champagne, loads of partying, celebrating. Um, yeah, I think I'd have that as my red, red letter session. Right, favourite fish, three favourite captures. Um... <laughs> First one would probably have to be a fish called Beedles. It was known as Beedles, or some of the lads knew it as the twin, um, or one of the twins. There was obviously two very similar. From the Big S down in Oxfordshire. Um, yeah, big old pits, like 90 acres with sort of 20 carp in there, like, probably, you know, low stock, big wild pit. Um, anyway, it was get, not, not supposed to be there, guesting. Um, I'd not been there for 10 years. I'd not stepped foot on the place for 10 years. Um, and just, the wind, the conditions perfect, you know, and I knew, expected these fish to be, this small family of fish to be in this corner. Um, and they were, I went over, it was a Saturday, went over with a friend of mine and I'd hooked it. I'm climbing over this fence through some thorn bushes and that, I'd nicked my hook link. Didn't realise it, I damaged my hook link as I'd gone over. My mate's up the tree telling me what's happening and beetles has come, took me crust, I've hooked it and the hook link's literally parted on the strike, the water's erupted. They've gone, they've all gone. It's like, anyway, the next day I'm leaving, I went over, to, did the night on Christchurch at Lynch Hill, um, and I went back on my own the next day uh, before I left for home. And sure enough, there was a couple of fish back in the corner and the same, I mean, crazy as it sounds, but that same fish was there, got it taking mixers. And this, I was, I can remember it, I was on the phone to, uh, to my missus. She, I was supposed to be heading home. And I, I'm gonna have a look over there before I go, you know, and just anyway. I snuck back over, um, got them feeding again, took a little while, 20, 30 minutes with the mixers, and I'd managed to hook beetles again. And it was bizarre because my floater rod I'd used over on Christchurch and I had it clipped up at 18 and a half wraps, I think it was, and I'd hooked it there on the end of my rod. And literally, I'd had to try and get my line from out of the clip. It, I'd hooked it, it had flat rodded me, and I'm just holding on and it's just gone across the top. I don't, it, you know, the, them fish in them pits, are just, they go, they're just animals, steam trains. And I managed, luckily I'd like walk forward into the water and managed to get my line from under the clip. And from there it just, you know, came in like a dog on a lead. But yeah, that's, that is a mega, mega carp. Unfortunately gone now, um, big oxygen crash on there last year and I think virtually every fish is gone. But yeah, lovely carp. Um, number two, could probably be the Blue Lagoon linear that I caught last year. That was, yeah, it was, I fished it quite hard. I fished it the year, so it was last year, 21, so 2020, I fished it a little while. I got the ticket um, 
actually there's not many fish in there probably there's probably 15 or so fish that first year um managed to catch a couple first night on there and then sort of caught a few more for that summer but i thought i'd leave it till the spring um go back fresh start it got caught in september um anyway i thought I'd go back in the spring have a fresh start and that was my you know i was gonna fish there until hopefully i caught it that was my plan um quite a friendly fish did get caught um, but the otters had been on over the winter the second biggest fish got killed found dead although they're not 100 percent sure it was otted but you know the, um, the third biggest fish one that i'd caught the, the previous year it's only 32 pound but lovely linear a real nice carp um that got found otted um, no definitely otted then there was another big skull that we found and i know which fish it was now it was a twisty common i'm pretty sure of it but it had a, quite a big bulky head and i i found it next to a stellar cam and it looked it looked you know it could have been a, a real big fish so we didn't even know it was still in there you know it, I'd seen the otter myself. Um, yeah, he wasn't even sure that it was still alive. But um, I'm trying to think, yeah, Terry Earn, I think yeah, Terry Earn turns up and proves it's still in there. You know, he catches it straight away. Like um, so, yeah, I'd carried on fishing through the spring and went pretty much went through the through most of them. Um, I caught the second, the set, there's two linears, another zip, like thirty pound. I caught that twice last year, and then. Yeah, a few more, and then eventually um, caught it on a floater, the big one. Got it feeding one morning at first light out in the middle of the pond. And the mixers slowly followed them into the corner. Um, frustrating. It took me bubble flow. It missed my dog biscuit 20 times. It was the most frustrating. 30 degrees by lunchtime. That's not, I still haven't hooked it, and the sweat's running off me. And frustration, you know, floater fishing's frustrating anyway, isn't it? And this was... There's all the other fish are feeding as well, so I'm moving me up bait away from them. The big ones come in and missing and taking me bubble float. So I lengthened my hook link and the next time it approached, it didn't see the bubble float to go for and I hooked it. Anyway, the bailiff's turned up, the, the guy who runs the lake, Jay's turned up behind me or whatever and passed me the net. As he's passed me the landing net, he's broke it, he snapped the arm on the landing net. So I've had to net this potential, well it's 49 pound, you know, got a mega carp and I've had to net it in a broken landing net down the bank. Um, yeah, very memorable. We had to swim it round because you couldn't get out with it. You, couldn't, you had to swim round to another swim with a carp in a retainer to, to get out with it. Um, yeah, wicked carp, real, real nice carp. Um, yeah, so that was number two. So number three, probably a fish called Coins from a place in Cambridge, Mepal. Um, jet black. I mean, it was. I'd seen a photo. A friend of mine had caught it. Liam um, sent me a photo. It was only my second night. Second night on the pit. Um, yeah, I got very lucky down there. And I caught that on my second night, and it just mind blowing. I'd seen a pic pictures of it. Other people's captures. It looked nice, but when I'd caught it, it had been. It had obviously been sitting up in the weed. You know, it looked. It was black. It was. It was absolutely mega. It had been sunbathing for all summer. Like, but yeah, caught that on a zig. Um, yeah, Mega got some great shots of it. There's Oz was fishing down in a swim further down, so he come up and did some pictures for me. And that, yeah, that was not the biggest cot, you know, thirty-seven pound, but it was. It's just you've you've caught it, Joe. You know how nice it is. It's Mega. I just like to say it's my first time on TV. <laughs> Hello, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so good. I thought we'd um, catch up for a little chat. Um, about time, mate. About yeah, time. We talked about doing it for a couple of years, haven't we? Yeah. Um, but yeah, just be intrigued, and I'm sure lots of other people are as well, to a little bit about the history of St. Ives, because obviously it's it's got a bit of history in the carp fishing world for you know, quite a few years now, but I think yeah. it's, it's, uh, that history is only going to keep on growing, isn't it? You know, we've got a serious future, uh, or you've got a serious future ahead of yourself um, with this, this complex. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I, th I think the, the complex was, was dug for gravel, when was it? Probably late 50s, early 60s was when it all started. But, um, you know, back then and up until well, realistically, up until about 1980, 85, 80, 86, 87, it probably weren't. It wasn't really known as a carp fishery. There was a few carp about, but at the point, it was all local people fishing for bits and bobs and, and mainly the tench. Um, there was there was a few carp over this way, on this side of the complex. Because I mean, when I was a kid and used to fish it, 
uh, if you imagine Meadow Lane splits a complex, complex north and south, um, everything over this side was, at the time when I was a kid, was Birmingham Anglers. They used to run this side, and St Ives Angling Club ran the other side with Andersons and St Ives Water, as it was known then, before it got expanded, the lagoon. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's only really become a carp fishery since I took it over. Right, okay. Um, I mean, I suppose most people who've been fishing a while would have first heard of it from the fat lady. Yeah. That yeah, was sort of quite notorious, yeah. wasn't it? I mean, that's, that's uh, however long ago now, um, that's, that's what put the place on the map, really. Uh, that was back in the time the lagoon probably only had 20 fish in it. Obviously, the fat lady was one of them. Um, but obviously once it got to 50, then uh, it, it started becoming quite well known. Um, Is that the one that you first sort of fell in love with? Or first well, no, not really. Oh. Anderson's, you know, fishing as a kid with my dad, you know, fishing for the tench on a Sunday morning. Um, you know, we didn't used to venture over here, over, over this side, but um, it would be Anderson's really, that's where, we cut, where I cut my teeth, yeah. Nice yeah. little lakes, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, it's getting very, very overgrown now, but not a lot you can do about that without spending thousands of pounds. Yeah, so. It's quite nice, though, isn't it? Because I suppose, oh, you know, you've got so many other lakes that they're not going to be. <laughs> sorry, the dog's clowning around in the background there. Um, they're not going to be the angler's first choice, are they? But it's nice that they're. They are kind of left alone, aren't they? And yeah. the fish do get, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, there's there's more, more carp in Andersons at the moment than people realise. I mean, I've, I've seen a shoal of 30 to 40 fish. Um, there's been a couple of nice fish out last year to, what was it, 29, fully scaled, uh, 28 something. Uh, Stevie Brocklebank had a, a 26 about four years ago. As far as I know, it hasn't been out since. Lovely. But it's, it's an ideal stalking water. You know, loads of little bits and bobs in the edge and shallows and reed beds. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. If, if you know what you're doing, you can catch fairly regular from there. But it just doesn't get because we've got the lagoon on that side. That's the big draw, obviously. And and people tend to ignore the smaller lakes, same as they ignore the smaller lakes for the pike as well in the winter. But you know, they they catch, uh, they produce big pike because the the recruitment from the the rudd and the perch and the roach. There's always been loads of prey fish in there, so the pike have always done really well, but people tend to concentrate on, yet again, on the lagoon, meadow, long reach fjords for the pike as well. But there's, you know, there's fish in there. Yeah, it's, it's quite impressive, um, just the, the stamp of fish you've got in general, isn't it? Because like you say, it's not just carp, is it? I mean, they've, I've had an 18 pound bream. Yeah, you know, I've yeah. had tench about around 10 pound, and um, I've seen a pike that must have been well over 30 pound. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, we've, we've got, um, yeah, Tench, they're still they're still the same. They're still the same amount, and they still go as big as they ever used to. Uh, tench and the bream. Um, I did get a few detractors when I started stocking the carp, saying that I'd ruined a good tench water. <laughs> but you can't run a fishery on three, four tench anglers. You no, know? I was going to say I never see anyone fishing for them. No, no. There's you know there's been a few in the past. You know that uh, what's his name, Alan Rawdon, actually had a chapter in his his book he wrote. Um, all about the tench. He was on here for about 10, 15 years, I think, fishing for the tench. Um, but even the smaller lakes, my mate had a, a nine, nine pound two out of Ivo a couple of weeks back. Um, it was on the feeder though, so it don't count. It's got to be on the float. Um, and, and double figure fish as well. Uh, it, I think 11 pound two is the biggest I've heard from Andersons. Oh, so there's, there's double figure fish in all of them. So in terms of your own fishing then, um, was it the fat lady was the, the first one that you kind of like being on, yeah. on the complex that you properly targeted? Yeah, that, that was, yeah, that was the first proper obsession, usual kind of stereotypical ob obsession, you know, sort of things going wrong because you, you're trying to catch a fish, <laughs> you know, in your, in your personal know life and your work life. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it took me a, more than a year to get my first bite out of there. That was when there was only 20, mm. 20 odd fish in there. Um, but I, I, I firmly believe that I, I put it down to uh, being there at the wrong time, all the time, because I was packing up for work in the mornings. Um, for various reasons, I, I ended up having a few months off work. And when I was able to stay in the mornings, beyond seven, eight o'clock in the morning, I started catching fish. Um, and that, that's when it all started. And as you know, confidence breeds, confidence breeds success. So 
you know, after you get your first fish, you, you, you start thinking a bit more, you start paying attention a bit more, or I did anyway, should have been paying attention in the first place. But <laughs> um, that was my first obsession, yeah, as a, uh, as, as a carp. Do you remember the session well when you caught it? Yeah, yeah. There was only, only two of us on, I think. Um, me and Sheffield John, uh, and I, it was off the lawns, and that, that was at the, at the point where you could literally walk from one end of the lawns to the other with your rod like that above the trees. But now they're all up there, and I remember getting it caught in a, it was about two in the morning, getting it caught up in a weed bed and literally walking to the other end of the lawns and, and getting it free and all that, and usual ball of weed story and netting it all that and giving it the shout and <laughs> I remember John walking up and says I suppose that bloody means you caught it and I was like yeah sorry mate <laughs> but he had it soon after anyway but yeah I Which, mean, uh, what was the next one on the list after that in because I think you've had most of the sort of known big ones haven't you on yeah, the complex yeah and, and you know sort of plenty that have since died you know um, the, the pig was almost equal in obsession that was the first 30 I'd ever seen on the bank uh, Simon Carr had it, and I remember yet again. I was, I think, I was on what they call a beach now, Pillbox Point, the beach, and he was on works. And at that point, there weren't any trees, so you could stand there watching them, you know, playing a fish. So I wandered over, and he, he caught it about 31 pound or something. And, uh, so that was also the obsession. That was always sort of like uh, partner in crime with the lady was the pig, and I had that that year as well. But it was it was under 40. <laughs> I just slung it back. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, the pig, um, the pet, which is still in there. I mean, that's, that is amazing how old that fish is. Um, and it's never gone over 25, 26 pound ever. Wow. Ever. Um, a fish called the NRA fish, uh, which was so named because a group of them, a group of locals who used to fish it, uh, caught that fish. And on the day they caught the fish, they got nicked for using, I think because it was only a two rod, uh, two rod maximum back then. You know, before the three rods, they were using three rods and, and they got nicked for it. So they called it the NRA, Fish National Rivers Authority, as it was back then. And that was that was the most leany looking linear you've ever seen. It was gorgeous. Um, Terminator Common, which was a common with, with kind of, if you, if you cut off the wrist of the tail and stuck the tail back on the body, that's what it looked like. <laughs> about 18 pounds, but yeah, good times, mate, good times. There you go. So, what, I mean, have you got a favourite lake on the complex? Not really, you know, not really. It's like asking me, what's my favourite album or favourite song off a favourite? They're all, you know what I mean? They're all, They've they're all got all, their all, own, yeah. Yeah, unique, I mean, obviously so. I've, I've caught, you know, I had the, the brown out of uh, Big Fjords twice. Which um, one was the hardest one for you to catch? What one do you think well, took the longest? The one that took the longest was the lady. The you lady, know, That was right. a year and a half, two years maybe. Um, but it didn't help that, you know, it, it was getting popular. I remember the first time it was publicised and back then I was like most carp anglers, like very secretive and didn't want anybody to know anything. And all of a sudden, bang, it appeared on the front cover of the Angling Times. So was it the unknown monsters are out there? And it was like, no! I think it was just over 40 at the time. That was uh, Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd, yeah, Paul Rudd. Um, and it, it just, it just, yeah, it was busy. So difficult to, you know. Yeah. I remember someone saying it was the, the easiest fish to catch, but the hardest fish to predict. Because it had come out of every swim randomly. It never, never really favored any areas. Although people did say it liked going in Waitrose Corner after it had been caught to sulk. But I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah, that would be the one. I mean, long reach, you've had all of the, the sort of yeah. main ones, haven't you? Yeah, long reach. Obviously, there's a few more in there now than there was when I was fishing it. The, the, the two main ones at the time were the Friendly Common and the Fully Scaled. Um, Starburst, is that in there? Starburst weren't in there. Starburst right. and Mutley's both appeared. They were both in shallow. Okay. And somehow they appeared in long reach. And grew some legs. Yeah, grew Walked some legs. Walked yards. Well, I'm glad they did because, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, <obviously. laughs> look how well they're doing. You right know, at the there. time I was I was fuming because obviously you're not supposed to move fish. I'm trying to, you know, I've, I, it may be a plan not written down, but it's in my head and, and people start moving fish. That's, that's a no-no, you know, but because it's so big and wild, you don't, 
I mean, I, I was mowing around here the other day, mowing and streaming. No one would know I've been here because mm. no one saw me. So mm. such a big complex. Um, it just infuriated me that you know someone would have the cheek to move fish. That's just selfish, isn't it? You know, very selfish. So it's like the friendly one of the oldest ones in There's, Norway. That is that's an old and the friendly. Um, well, the, the the fully scaled's old as well, you know. And it obviously must have been friendly at one point to be given that name. No, no, it was always friendly, as in not friendly. Oh, okay. It was right, always an, an ironic name. <laughs> Yeah, as in not friendly, yeah. But absolutely. it did just get caught a bit more, didn't it? Like, you know, sort of not five years or whatever it's been. Yeah, so. yeah, I don't know if it's, it's it's just become wise in its old age, but I don't know, mate, no, I don't know. But no. trouble is, you know, you've got all the out of bounds. Um, I can't remember the last time it's been out. Last time it was out. Five you know? years, yeah. Five years. Unless, that, well, that we've when... heard a rumour that it came out a little while ago, but no one hasn't seen a picture yet. So. Yeah, was that Dave Little at at that time? Uh, I believe so, yeah. And that that was not solely because of angling skill, but we were allowed to open up the far bank, the north bank, the footpath bank, yeah. for the first time in many, many years um, along the boy line there. And that's obviously, they know it's safe. Um, so when that was opened up, temporarily unfortunately um people started fishing it and filled, you know, their, boots. filled their boots yeah <laughs> yeah so it's cheating really i wouldn't have done it dave, dave little i wouldn't have done it. <laughs> like shooting fish in a barrel <laughs> not but yeah yeah and that, yeah last time it's been out i mean people you know keep saying oh he's dead he's dead but no, i've seen okay. it yeah well yeah. you've seen it yeah. yeah every year i've seen it yeah it's teasing me yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's mega, mega fish. Um, so how did you actually end up coming about taking it over then? Um, did you work for the EA for quite work, a long time, didn't you? Worked for the EA for nearly nearly 20 years in various roles, yeah. Obviously, I always had a connection with this place. Fished it since a kid. Um, the guy that used to run it um, had a tackle shop in town um, and, and ran the lakes as well. So I was a bailiff for him. Um, you know, me and my mates, some of us that still fish it, they were bailiffs as well. That was sort of like 19, 1988, I think, was when it changed hands. Previous to that, it was um, Amy Anglers. Oh, it might have been before then. I just hope there's no one watching that knows more than I do. There might be. <laughs> I, could, I could just make it up, couldn't I? <laughs> um, yeah, work for the EA. Well, we'll go back a bit. Initially, um, fished it since I was a kid. Uh, 1986, the guy that used to run this place, Bernard, you're a diamond. Um, he runs Fen Drayton now with Gary Bays and all that lot. Oh, okay. um, he was actually employed by ARC, Amy Roadstone Corporation, when it was owned by the gravel company and managed, the fishing was managed by the gravel company. Uh, both this, Horseshoe, Thrapston Lagoon, Field Lagoon, Lynch Hill, that was all all under the same umbrella. And I was, I was fishing one day, skiving off school. And uh, this chap came up to me, it's the first time I'd met Bernard and said, we're, we're gonna have a, a YTS student, youth training scheme student, um, sort of like an apprenticeship back in the day. And I managed to wangle that. So I was two years down here as assistant fishery manager, getting taught all the stuff by Bernard. Sweet. Um, after that, I ended up with the EA. Then after 20 years, Trevor, who used to run the shop on the lakes, uh, from his tackle shop in St Ives, he um, he retired and, and I took it on from him. So the shop went, obviously, um, but I took over the lease. Um, it's about 15 years ago now, I think, it might be 16, 17. And had that sort of off. been a dream or was it just literally just popped up and, oh, I'll have a bit of that? Everything just fell in my lap, yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't something I consciously went after or thought about doing or ever thought I'd be able to. So. It, it just kind of happened, you know, obviously connections with the EA, it, it was useful for, for occasionally doing stuff down here, not a conflict of interests. Um, <laughs> and obviously got to know the place and, you know, it was fairly tight with Trevor, so that's, that's, that's how I took it on. But obviously at the time there weren't many carp. Um, uh, obviously the lady was still alive back then. Um, but I didn't want to stock any carp because she was such a big old fish and you've, you've witnessed so many 
carp deaths during spawning of the bigger older fish after putting in the young sprightly fish. Yeah. I didn't dare risk it, so I knew it was it was going to have to die before I could start right. developing it. And and unfortunately, it, it happened within two years of me taking on the lease. You know, one day there was 17 anglers on and a, a 50, 60 pounder. Next day it was dead and there was no anglers for the next year, year and a half. So tricky times, tricky times. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, to fill so many lakes, you know, with not that many fish is not an easy yeah. prospect, is it? Yeah. Um, but obviously, you know, you had good foresight because you spent a fair few quid, I imagine, on uh, fish for the meadow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two main stockings, was it? Um, I tend to forget. I'm not one of these people that, that writes things down. Um, I think it's three. Three stockings. From two different suppliers? Yeah, AJS and uh, VS. Um, the VS fish were kind of 10 to 12 pounds, and they're the ones that are coming out now, 30, you know, 35 to, what, 30 to 45 now. Yeah. Um, saying that, some of the other 30s, the more scaly ones are the AJS fish. You know, they're doing well, but obviously they're not doing as well as the, the sort of sparsely scaled bigger ones, which went in at a bigger size. So that, that was three different different stockings of fish from four to 12 pounds. And, and you know you know the score now. Um, yeah. You know, you just need time to, to sit on your hands and, and wait for it to all blossom. Which, yeah. Which it now has done. Because you must have sitting so there for 10 years, you know, not selling any tickets for, for that one. You know? Yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it was tough going. You know, people think, oh, yes, oh, yeah, make, make money. But no, it, 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 well, it was not like that back when I started, you know, and you're always expecting the phone call, you know, the, that fish is dead or this fish is dead, you know. I love it but, though, that there's a box of chocolates that lake, you know, there's, there's <laughs> yeah. such a variety of fish in there and absolutely, uh, like, you know, and as well as I do, you know, there's still, a, you know, a good couple of surprises in there that are going to shock a couple yeah. of people at some point if they, ever, if they ever get caught. But I mean, yeah, these other ones that are packing on the way, I mean, it's quite almost scary, isn't it? You know, a few years time, yeah, I, I do. It's gonna be forties, you know. <laughs> I do. I do lots of rubbing on my legs in private. You know, thinking, yeah, it's 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 happening now. It's but it's, it's the fact they've had that natural, you know, unmolested upbringing as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, you know hundred odd acres, including the fjords, or eighty. I think meadows fifty or sixty thereabouts, and it's just absolutely full of naturals. Great water quality, gin clear, as you know. Bit of a blue tinge nowadays. Um, it's like they've got this, the, well, not like this, but you know, like obviously other fish that get caught from a young age, they lose that protective slime, don't they? From a young age. They don't look in as, there, yeah. everyone you catch feels like a tench almost. Yeah, you know? yeah, oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, like they've been sort of semi-varnished. Yeah, they've got a natural sheen to yeah. them. Yeah, because um, I mean, even, even though, you know, people are probably, you know, seeing the fish you've been catching and seeing others on, on social media and whatnot, um, as individuals, they don't come out that often, you yeah. know, once, twice a year, and that's what you want. You know, you don't want thoroughly molested carp because, well, they're, they're going to become, well, can become unhealthy, and, you know, every time they're on the bank, there's a risk something could go wrong, but... Yeah, well, once and twice a year is the ones that do get caught, you know, quite, you know, but yeah. there's, there's others, isn't there, like... Oh, know, yeah, oh, yeah. They ain't been out for five, ten years, or, yeah. you know... Um, that common I caught a little while ago that Boots Boots recognised from yeah. many, many years ago, and yeah, he said, yeah, I don't, you know, as far as he's aware, that one hasn't been out for, yeah. for a out, long time. Yeah, out of quite a few fish, there there weren't many commons that we put in. I can't remember how many, but it was probably 10, 12, something like that, out of 200 odd fish, or you know maybe more. But yeah, they just forget. they go missing for years in there, don't they? Yeah, which absolutely. is what you want really, isn't it? It makes you feel a bit better about catching them and. Yeah, you know, when you put them back and think oh, there's a good chance that's not going to see another hook for a couple of years, it's yeah, it absolutely. makes you feel a bit better about the whole situation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, well, we're the brown then. What's what's the history of that one? Do you know? Well, I don't. Uh, I can only tell you from when we first stumbled upon it, and that was um, that was in little fjords in a tiny little bay that's just all covered in reeds now, um, fairly close to where Dave Lane had the the black linear blackjack. Um, and we were just mooching about, me and Couchy, me mate Couch, and uh, see a few fish in this little bay. 
And it's like, well, where, where have they come from? You know, because you very rarely saw any fish, and most of it is only this deep anyway. Um, so we had a go at stalking them, and, and Couchy nailed the brown. Obviously, it wasn't called anything at the time. It may well have been, you know, there may well have been people caught it before us, but hardly any anglers and, and no one really talking to each other. Um, and that was that was 29 pounds, so it was already it's already been about. And I've since been reliably informed it got moved yet again out of Longreach and put in the fjords, or probably bunged in State Pit, wasn't it? Right. Being being right behind Longreach, um, and that's where we first stumbled on it. And Couchy had it had had the brown 29, and we went, popped home for a cup of tea and come back, and um, I had the smallest fish of the bunch, I think it was 12 pound common. Nice. Which yet again, I think Dave Lane may have caught out of a similar area to where he caught the black linnet, and I think it was still about twelve pound. <laughs> you know, many years later. Right, in a hundred, you know, just like, like in hundred odd acres. Yeah. you know, that's a, still a result, yeah. a massive result with only a handful of fishing. Yeah. So that was the first time we caught. Or I'd seen it, and it, it, it got caught and, and on the bank. Um, and the rest is history. It got bigger. It got caught more. Well, once a year or once every two years, you know. Um, and ended up 50 pounds, which is incredible for a fish of that age. Yeah. You know, I think previous to that, it was, biggest was 47, 48, something like that. Yeah. I don't and think it been out for a couple of years, had it, apart from the mishap last year of someone yeah, oh, looking at yeah, it on the lure. <laughs> that, that is unfortunate. You know, I'm, I might be thinking about the, you know, the lure fishing and pike fishing in the summertime type thing. It's only, um, it's only like one guy, don't <coughs> it? <laughs> well, yeah, one person, one massive freak. Um, and he, yeah, he managed to accidentally hook it up on a lure, shall we say, yeah. But uh, to, to make 50 is incredible. Um, of course, it had to be you, didn't it? Mr, <laughs> Mr. Oh. Mr. Golden Testicles. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, fantastic. But yeah, it's, it's probably one of the oldest on site. Um, and what a car! For sure. And you know, you wouldn't even think it's that age, would you? By the, the condition of it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the mouth, the, everything. Just yeah, what a creature. Mm. Well, like I say, the, uh, the future of the place is extremely bright, isn't it? And uh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's thanks to you, mate. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'd, uh, you know, you, you walk about thinking, yeah, this is nice, this is nice. But if you don't, you know, I actually take the time to think how it's progressed, then then yeah, I do give myself the occasional pat on the back. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> what, what I like is because you're a proper angler, you know, who likes a bit of hardcore fishing, is it's kind of unnurtured, isn't it? You know, to, to an extent, um, especially long reach. It's lethal when some of them swims, but that's yeah. part of it. That's part of the parcel of that kind of thing. And yeah, if well, you want to fish for them sort of fish, you've got to deal with them circumstances. Exactly, um, because I've, I mean, I've, obviously I've fished elsewhere, fished other waters, you know, this is what I like. This, this is to me, is fishing. Um, you know, no proper swims. I mean, at one point the lagoon had little frontages all round it. There's a, the remains of them in a, occasional swims, but they've nearly all gone now. But yeah, that that to me is the, the is the essence of the carp fishing. It's it's wild, and um, I can be lazy and make make out it's deliberate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all part of my management strategy is not cutting that back and not cutting that back rather than going mad and making everything real neat and tidy. You know, obviously you've got to keep access open to certain swims uh, and that's it. But to me, I grew up, uh, carp fisheries weren't like they are now, you know, all swims, toilets, da da da. Yeah, you know, I get phone calls off people and, and messages off people saying what facilities you got. It's like, <laughs> eh, it's not a campsite, it's, it's a fishery. We don't. You know, although there is stuff up the road, you know, the toilets and shops within five minutes, but nothing on site. We couldn't we couldn't afford to have anything on site. It wouldn't it wouldn't work, wouldn't work. So yeah, it's it's good the way it is. And and luckily there's still the hardcore of anglers out there that appreciate it. You know, rather than oh, where's your bark chipping or where's your MOT and where's this and you know. So hopefully will keep attracting the right sort of angler as well. People aren't surprised, aren't disheartened, aren't disappointed that it's, it's you know, you can't reverse into every swim and <laughs> all the rest of it. So long may it remain like this. Brilliant. Um, well, you don't actually have a waiting list as such, do you? No, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm not organised enough for it, although Mary Ann might be. 
uh, organised organised enough to have a waiting list. But when I first took it on, I inherited a waiting list, and I know it wasn't quite the same as it is now. I had a lot less fish. But what tends to happen is people will put their name on a waiting list. Something will come up during this year. They'll get a ticket somewhere else next year because it won't be the only lake they've got their name down on. Yeah. And you'll phone them up. Oh, no, I've already got somewhere. And you'll go down the list and everyone's already got somewhere. So I don't, I don't tend to bother. I tend to think of it as a lottery. You know, we've got more members than we ever have had, which is, is, is no big deal because, I mean, we're on shallow at the moment and we're the only ones here. <laughs> yeah, Longreach is one person. Longreach, one person. I don't know about over the road, not being over there. Meadow... You know, probably half a dozen, half a dozen <laughs> on 120 um, acres. <laughs> so springtime really, really busy. Then, then summertime gets quiet. Um, but back to the membership, I, I just do it on a first come, first serve basis. Obviously, the, the existing members from the previous year get first shout. Um, then you make a list of, of, of the tickets you got available, and it's it's first come, first served. Really, you know, it's it's a bit like uh, chew in that respect. You know, you just got to be lucky enough to, to get through. So you maxed out at the moment or? Well, I don't know what maxed out is. Right, you're just playing uh, it. You know what I mean? Easy. Just play it by ear, <laughs> going on ratio of tickets sold to anglers on the bank in an average during the course of a week. You, you know what kind of percentage it can handle against how many members you've got. Normally it's, it's, it's normally about 20 to, to 30% across the whole complex. So if you had 100, 100 members, there might be 20, 30 anglers on the whole thing. That seems to be the score. So I've, I'm very conscious of not overselling it yeah. because I don't, a, don't want to be called a greedy bugger and B, the more people, the more chance there is of people banging heads, getting the wrong sort of member, people leaving litter, shit in bushes so it's it, I, I keep it comfortable mm. keep it comfortable but it's always the same every year i think oh, i've taken too many people springtime people everywhere but then come june july it's like this you yeah. know there's, 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 and you think oh, i wish i told more because well, that would have been carnage in spring as well, don't oh you, we you need know? people about you know eyes and ears in, in the winter and that and and the otters and whatever yeah i mean we've got a certain amount of bailiffs obviously the, the more eyes and ears the better because it's fairly, it's accessible by the public. There's one or two public footpaths, but people from the town seem to think they can go what they, where they want, when they want, and all the rest of it. Um, you know, not all of them are responsible, and it's just nice to have, you know, bums on seats and, and eyes in your head. So, <coughs> you know, I like to see people down here rather than it being totally empty. But as for top amount of anglers or most most amount of anglers, I'm not sure. You know, I, I know how many I need to, to be able to pay the bills and all the rest of it. Um, you know, this year I could have doubled the membership, but would have doubled the, the aggro probably. You know, you get personality clashes and all the rest of it. The more people you get, the more, the more chance for sort of bother and people casting over each other and all that. So at the moment, it's, it's, it's a happy balance. Um, and that's, that's the way I want to keep it, really, you know. I've got no dreams of becoming a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so basically, if anyone did want to apply, then it's just a case of get, printing off a form, filling it out and sending it to you at the right time. Well, the, yeah, there, there is that or um, emailing, WhatsApping, texting. I mean, I know, I know I've um, not responded to everyone this year. Um, I probably will get round to it by the end of the year because obviously we've got to sort it out next year's and it soon comes round. Um, so just by sending in a form and photo and all that doesn't guarantee, that wouldn't guarantee it. Best to either speak to me, um, but preferably message, email, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then uh, we make notes and, and then we'll be able to crack on next year. Dog's having a lovely time. Yeah, it's first time on, on, uh, on telly. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Right, mate. Well, we'll get out of this sun, shall we? It's, uh, well, it's pretty blooming hot. It's lovely, yeah. though, isn't it? I'm not complaining. No, no, absolutely not. There was a nice breeze just out there, but it wasn't so much of a nice backdrop. <laughs> top man. Cheers, Gordy. Thanks again, mate. No worries. Done a top job, and uh, no yeah, worries. Absolutely love the place. Uh, pleasure. Where it all began, my very first carp. Up until this point, I'd done a lot of fishing. I was probably nine years old, something like that. 
Um, but I'd seen the books, I'd seen the magazines, and I really wanted to catch a carp. And it was a good friend at the time, Craig Reed. He was a few years older than me. He taught me a, a lot of stuff on the river. We'd been poaching weir pools for the better chub and perch and stuff. And he said he knew a lake with carp in. Uh, and one evening, my mother dropped him and I over there after school and uh, I set about trying to catch my very first carp and I managed to achieve it on that evening. Uh, fishing with a float, um, it was very small, probably around three or four inches long, but it's a moment that will live with me forever. Um, I realised at that point that they were catchable and not only were they catchable, they were catchable in quite easy ways. You know, you could float fish for them with a single grain of corn. And yeah, after that particular session at a little pond in Akeley, I went on to search and track them down in other small ponds in the surrounding area and I learned a lot more about them and it really was the fundamentals that kind of yeah gave me the basis for a lot of my carp fishing today and that is sort of sight fishing or fishing real simple methods to go about catching carp. Well as you can see by my non carpy attire and the yucca sticking out of my head <laughs> I'm at home in my garden and this is me signing off for the month but before I do I um, hope you enjoyed that show I certainly did um, absolutely crazy session the planets aligned and the universe provided in a big way so thank you very much I don't know why I always look up when I'm talking to the universe it's all around us <laughs> Um, yeah, so just another one, obviously, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who's contributed. Um, we've done a draw for 1,500, was it about that? 1,500 quid's worth of prizes, something like that, recently. And that was three months worth of contributions, and in that time there was just over 300 people that have contributed. You know, and the show gets, well, averages probably about 40,000 views on each show uh, for the first month or so. So yeah, it's a very, very tiny percentage of you who are willing to contribute towards this show um, to keep it on YouTube. So if you do watch this and you do enjoy it, please consider just, you know, a few quid. It's just, you know, just like buy me a pint or a coffee if you like. Um, a small contribution goes a long way and I will keep producing the goods for you. Obviously, I've still got the option of moving it over to a website, but as I've said many times in the past, I like to keep it on YouTube because I like to um, encourage and inspire people to get out fishing more for their own mental wealth, if you like. Um, it's a great sport, great pastime, and it does us the world of good. So yeah, the more people I can tap into, then the more good I feel like I'm doing if that makes sense but it's not me doing that good it's you guys by contributing towards it and keeping it on YouTube because obviously without you doing that I wouldn't be able to and these people that are being inspired to get out and do more fishing are so because of you so big up yourselves thank you very much um, I'm out filming the next few days with Alan Blair. We've got quite a uh, challenge ahead of us. It's going to be lots of walking and 30 degree heat in blistering sunshine. So, tall order, but we'll give it a good go. See you in four weeks' time. Thanks again. <laughs>